This is the third part in this extended probability problem, where we're looking at M&Ms. And for this specific problem, we're asked to compute the probability that three randomly selected peanut M&Ms are all red. How do we go about computing this? Well, it's a little different than the previous ones we've done. And the reason I say that is because in this particular scenario, we are picking three M&Ms as opposed to one M&M. So let me get a visual going here. Let me draw those three M&Ms. So we randomly select one M&M, we randomly select another M&M, and we randomly select a third M&M. Now the cool thing about this particular scenario is that these three choices are actually independent events. And what does that mean? Well, each occurrence is independent of the other one. Namely, when I pick my first M&M, it's gonna be a certain color. But when I choose the second M&M, it really doesn't matter what I chose on the first M&M, I still have the same probabilities going on for my second M&M choice. That's the idea behind independent events. Now for our specific problem, what kind of sequence of events do we want to occur? We want to randomly select three M&Ms and we want them all to be red. So when I select that first M&M, what is the probability that it will be red? Well, that probability is 0.12 or 12%, right? When I reach and get that second M&M, what is the probability again that it's red? Because look, we're looking for all of them being red. Well, again, 12% chance of getting a red M&M, so the probability that the second M&M is red is also 0.12. And finally, we get that third choice, or that third M&M. What is the probability that that M&M is red? Well, that M&M being red has a probability of the same as the other ones, which is 12% or 0.12. So what do we do with that? We can use the rule for independent events, namely the probability that A and B occurs is equal to the probability that A occurs times the probability that B occurs when A and B are independent events. What does that help us do? Well, that tells me that because the selection for each M&M is independent, if I want them to all occur, I can get the probability that all three occur by multiplying the probabilities of each of those independent events. In words, if I want to find out what is the probability that three M&Ms are all red, I will simply take the probability that the first is red times the probability that the second is red times the probability that the third is red. Or in other words, I will take 0.12 multiplied by 0 0.12, multiplied by 0 0.12. We can also think of that as 0 0.12 cubed. So this is what we need to put into our calculator. 0 0.12 times 0 0.12 times 0 0.12 or 0 0.12 cubed, evaluated on the calculator gives us 0. 001728. That's the probability that three randomly selected peanut M&Ms will all be red. Let's make sure we round our answers to the nearest three decimal places, and so we have a probability of 0 0.002, rounding that third decimal place, from 1, 7 to 2, that's the probability that we are looking for.